everyone, how are you all? Thank you for joining me in my live studio today. I've got some nice inky techniques to do with you today. Something a little bit different. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Create and Craft and I love anything to do with craft. So if you are quite creative or want to learn some stamps, inks, dyes, anything at all, you've come to the right place. We have thousands of subscribers now and we already have over 225 videos, which is amazing for you to just sit and watch, enjoy, learn. And if you don't have the products in the video, you will have something in your stash that will work. Before I get ready for my first demonstration, I'm going to show you a little bit of inspiration, showing you some of the products that are going to be used in today's studio. Hi, I'm so very, very excited to tell you about the second range within our gossip collection. We have our glitter ink in bottles. So what I'm going to show you is how to create a beautiful look without the sparkle. So if you use the ink as a standalone, you can still achieve some amazing looking artwork. So I have the two bottles in front of me and I've picked two colors and you get the pets within the collection. And I'm just gonna show you if you drop this onto some cardstock and spritz with some water, wait for the wow. So basically two looks within one bottle. So those fabulous inks in those bottles are what we're going to be using today. I haven't touched them for a while and I know a lot of you have got them at home so I felt like it were a great day to maybe revisit some of our earlier products. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button. This um, lets you know when we've got more videos, more inspiration, and it gives you a quick notification to say, hey, we're live, do you want to watch? And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to pop a comment on as well. I always do post pictures of the finished makes at the end of the studio. So you can pop a comment on, did you enjoy it? Is it something you're going to try? Or have you been doing it for a while? Or, you know, I'm not the crafter who comes up with all the amazing ideas, techniques and things like that. We all inspire each other. So maybe some of the stuff that we use in studio or the inspiration that I've done in studio is something you've been doing for a while. And we love to hear from you. And if you have made any makes, we like to see them too. You know, it's a great place to be you've absolutely come to the right place for some inspiration so in today's studio I'll just show you what we're going to use I'm going to be using some of Claire's lovely products today so I have these two lovely ones here so it's the modern florals and I'm going to be using this lovely bouquet here and then we've got some beautiful sentiments and I'm going to be using the coordinating die too also in studio let's just set these aside I'm going to be using our gossip ink in bottles now for those of you that don't know what they are basically they are a water-based ink that has packed with glitter so traditionally you would find them packed with mica these are packed with glitter and it's super fine so if you want um, ink with no sparkle you just leave the bottle on your table for about 30 seconds the glitter will sink to the bottom because it's heavier than mica and then you can use your pipette to take out the clean clear color however if you are wanting sparkle on your project all you have to do i'll see if it if it can show you there so can you see the glitter at the bottom there just have to give it a good old shake yeah, you can just see that there twizzling around hopefully there we go and it gives your project such a beautiful sparkly finish too. They come in a collection of 12 colours. You get the 12 pipettes and they come in a lovely box and they're all individually boxed as well. So I'm just going to do a little demo today using these lovely products. So let me just get my colours back in check. So for those of you that have got them at home, I've got number 7 and number 11 because I'm going to do two cards. 7 and 11 if you want to make a note if you have got them at home and I'm using 10 and 12 so already in a purpley and an aqua blue and a navy blue so I'm just going to set these aside and we'll start with our lovely background first so all of this is a oh, I've already marked it look didn't take long did it so I've got a piece of watercolor card here just from our carter and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to spritz the card with some water before I do that though I'm going to give all of my inks a really good shake 
get that glitter activated because I want my projects to be sparkly. And then I'm just going to take the lids off and just set them aside. Then I'm good to go. Now, in fact, that'll probably... There you go, can you see that? How cool is that? I'll just give it a good more shake. You see it all swizzling around in there, it's beautiful. So, the red one, and then we'll do our lovely purpley blue and our aqua blue. Now, I have done one ahead of time, but I just want to show you how fabulous these make backgrounds and things like that, and just encourage you maybe just to, you know, try doing some inky backgrounds because they are such fun. So I've got my pipettes also. So I've got a nice blue one and a purple one there, and then we've got a red. And So if you've never seen Studio before, welcome. Uh, if you are watching the live feed, don't forget to pop a comment on. We love to hear from you. You know, um, we have our regular fans and that's wonderful also, but it is also nice sometimes for the newbies to um, talk to us also. So please do say hi. So I've just got a bottle of water here and I'm just going to spritz this side because I'm just going to go on this side first. Now I have got a bit of pink, uh, a bit of purple on there, but it's all right. I'm not worried about it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this purple. Now the glitter's pretty much sank already. So I'm just going to give a twizzle with my pipette. You do get the pipettes in with the collection. I don't want too much. I'm just going to drop some of this lovely color in. I'm not doing a lot. Just get rid of that excess ink on there. And then I'm going to pop some of this lovely red on there. And you can see, look at that, I've just stirred that. I don't know if you can see that. I've just stirred it. See the glitter. Beautiful. I'm just going to pick up some of this lovely red. Drop it in there. So you can spray with more water if you want to encourage it to move around a little bit. There is no harm in that and it will just move around as is. So let me just show you the other two colours on this side. So let's just wet this side. Now you would do two separate pieces if um, you were doing this at home. But just for ease on camera, I've just gone as one sheet. So I'm just going to take some of this blue. I'm just giving it a good old activation with a twizzle, should we say. Pick some of that lovely ink up. You'll have to let me know which colour card you like the best too because you know, I can't always do what I like and I know a lot of people always like the one that I wasn't particularly keen on, which is fun. So get this other colour. There we go. So I'll just give that a spritz with some water, encourage it to move around a little bit more. They are so pigmented and a little goes a long way, so please do remember that. So I'm just going to blast this off. What I am going to do is, because there's a lot of ink and a lot of water on there, I'm just going to soak some of it up for speed. Now, you at home have the courage to maybe let it air dry, because um, this is going to, I'm going to have my heat going on for hours trying to soak up all this ink. So I'm just um, helping it out a little bit so we can move on with the demo really. Otherwise we'll be here for hours with our heat gun. And as it dries, you will then get to see the fabulous sparkle come through. I'm just mopping up the puddles, should we say. But if I wasn't on air, I would absolutely leave it and let it do its thing. Just get rid of some of that puddling. Pop that to the side. So I'll just start to dry it a little bit. And as it starts to dry, you'll see the glitter come to life hopefully if not I'll, I'll uh, untape it and hold it up to the camera so you'll be able to see anyway just chase that back over there it would look fabulous in more than two colours also I don't know if you can see that, but the gold glitter there it looks beautiful. Could we zoom in a little bit more? Just to show, thanks. 
that that's a factor. See here, it's beautiful gold. Right, let's move on to the lovely so I'm just pushing this around. So this one's got a lovely gold undertone and this one's got a beautiful like silvery pink undertone. I'm just gonna take some of this puddle up. So at the moment, pretty ugly mess, yeah, you're right, but wait till you see how gorgeous it looks when we pop it on our card. So I think that's pretty much done really, pleased with that one. Let's just take it off the table. Just lift this up and just see. Can we see that there? I hope it's there. We go. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Let's see if we can get this one silver one. There we go. See that there? Really, really lovely effects. Now I just always give them a little bit of a brush just to get rid of any excess on their glitter. Don't worry, you are not wiping it off. Look, it's all still there. It's just to get rid of any excess, so because to prevent you from getting your mucky paws all over your work, basically. Thank you. So to keep an absolute tidy station and not have any accidents, I'm just going to pop the lids on these. They do come with a little cork in as well, so you will not have the problem of um, them leaking through the lids into your bags or wherever you're popping them. So just give my table a wipe, there we go. And you do get the pipettes in them as well. These are coming back to TV very soon as well, so if you did miss out, uh, they are coming back. Right, so what I wanted to do with this now is I loved it and I thought, oh, you know what, I'd make a great background, but let's elevate it, let's make it look a bit more better. A bit more better, a little bit better. So I'm just gonna use some white glue here now you could use any glue as long as it dries clear so i just got some white glue and all i did on some of the areas was i did some squiggles just random like squiggles lines maybe filled in a bit of the area there i'm not even so squiggles smudges lines literally just go for it i'm just doing it on this one for example because i have got one pre-done and then you'll be able to see the effect now you can do it as little or as big as you want to and leave it in lines if you want to like so you can see that there it looks quite disgusting should we say and then all I've got here is some fo foil on a roll and it works with any foil. It doesn't have to be hot foil, cold foil, any foil at all. Just going to cut um, a little bit off here. And these are the lovely rolls that you can get from Create and Craft. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it on. Now, if you have a Pritt stick, it works with that as well. Lovely Claire does it with a Pritt stick, but it, it does literally work with anything. So I'm just going to pop it on and I'm just going to give it a good old rub into that glue. And then when you peel it back, you see what happens. Get a lovely gold finish. Give it a good old rub on there. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to still go for it. Keep going. And then what I'll do is I'll lift it up and show you the effects. 
and it gives you like a gold vein going through your work. Make sure you get all that glue covered. So the gold foil needs to be face up though. You know, don't like do it that way because that is the wrong way and I'm telling you that because that's what I did to start with. So the gold foil needs to be facing up. So don't be scared to absolutely go for it. Get lots on there and it looks like a lovely vein going through. your work. See that there? You see that? Yeah, there we go. There's quite a lot on there actually. So it depends on how much, um, can we see that there? Depends on how much glue you put on and um, what sort of effect. So on this one that I've cut down, I've got less on. Can we see that there? Hopefully you can see that and it's just in lines and then this is the effect if you put more on look. Can we see that there? So quite a nice effect really. Um, the other alternative you could use if you haven't got the foil is use your glitter and things like that. So put the pen, the glue on, throw your glitter on. Gold glitters maybe you might get a similar effect. So here is one as you can see that I've done earlier so let's move on to our actual demo then because this is one that I did earlier so I have the lovely stamp set with this light bouquet here and just grab a piece of white cardstock my Eureka so I'm just going to stamp it out in black first and then we'll die cut it out set that aside. I'm just going to stamp this one out in black. And I wanted to use this one today because I felt like I didn't have a formation or a drawing that I've done where all the leaves and petals were in a cluster like that. Everything I seemed to do was being on an arch. Whereas you all know I do love a really good arch. I think an arch frames things for so it was lovely to see this one that Claire had done as in a cluster together like that. So it's made me think a little bit differently when I come to draw mine now that maybe I should chop out my formation a little bit. Just shows how different shapes and sizes go with different things. It's crazy. So I've just stamped that out in a black and with this collection you also get the coordinating outline but I'm not going to cut it out because I appreciate you all know how to die cut an element and if you don't and you're wanting to know I can always do videos showing how to get the most out of your die cuts just pop a comment on and let me know there are so many videos um, showing you this sort of technique so what I'm going to do is just going to grab my oil pencils so these are the pencils that I'm using today and I'm going to use the oil ones and I'm not going to colour it all. I'm just going to maybe colour this one here and I've got two colours here from the collection. 5049 if you have got these pencils and 5121. So two different shades of blue. So an aqua undertone and a, a blue undertone. So what I always do with these pencils is they're brilliant for layering so you get the build up of colour so they're so vibrant. So what I always do with the light colour is I just do a light colour all over the whole flower. I always work in circu circular motion unless I'm doing a feathering technique which requires lines. So I'm just covering the whole flower and as you've noticed I'm doing it blue simply because I've got that blue, beautiful blue background. So I'm laying that first layer of colour down first in the light blue. So very light, nothing fancy. Then with the blue, I'm just going to add a darker colour and I'm just going to take some of the blue from the centre out into some of these petals. Not giving it much thought. I'm just coming out from the centre out. 
and just leaving it shy of the light blue and I'm going to do that on all of them and then with the same colour I'm going to go back in on top and bring it all together and as you can see it just absolutely pops so you can see I've just done this one here and look at the difference from that to the rest of them so again Just going to zoom in and show you. Thank you. So you can see the difference already. So straight over the top and it, same colour and it'll just absolutely bring it all together. And you can layer build with all your colours, your darker colours, your lighter colours. So, so look how vibrant that looks now if you want to add a dim dimension and make it look a little bit more realistic you can do the feathering so you can add some detailing lines so straight from the center out and this just gives your flower a little bit more dimension and makes it maybe look a little bit more realistic so we've only used two pencils but look at the color colors in there see that there So it is only a bit of paper and it is only a pencil. So give it a go. If you don't like it, pop it in a bin and do it again. Change your colour pencils, as in the colours in the set, and try a different colour. Don't start with red, though. Red's the hardest colour to learn. I don't know why. It's really difficult to get light and shade on red. So I've repeated the process and I've die cut it out. And this is one I've done ahead of time. Here we go, look. And on these leaves here, I just did them in lovely gold, which is in the set, which is this one here. And they've got like a lovely metallic gold on the leaves. And this is just to keep in theme with our lovely card. So I'm just going to set this aside. So what I've done is I've taken a top folding note card here and I've just trimmed off this little piece here so we just have this sort of look can we um, just zoom out a little bit more sorry thank you can you see that there just set these aside thank you there we go perfect thank you so we've just got like our card then we've cut chopped off this corner and that's going to because I trimmed my background down from earlier and what we're going to do is we're going to pop this under here like so and then we've got our beautiful card coming together can we see that so all I'm going to do first off is I would probably use tape let's just go with glue because that's what I have to hand so I'm just going to pop some glue on this part here So I'm not going to go right to the edge because I don't want it to splurge out. Oh. That is not like me not to turn my phone off. Like so. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up and I'm going to make sure it's flush at the bottom. Best I can anyway. Then I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to give that a good old push. Give it the opportunity to grab. So this is a little bit different, is this card in the sense the shape's different, but it is good sometimes to swap out your traditional sh sh traditional shaped cards and do something a little bit different. So that's exactly what we're doing today. Just giving that opportunity to grab and I've got a little mucky mark on there so I'm just going to use my eraser get rid of those um, marks so then you've got this sort of effect which is super super cool 
So I'm going to bring out our element and ahead of time I have stamped friend and used the die cut that goes round. Just looking at that though, I'll just show you. You can can you see no? You can see there that I didn't quite get the die um, lined up. Can you see that there? But I think it looks really good. It's giving me like a drop shadow. So don't worry if you don't line it up perfect because you get this lovely drop shadow effect there. I did try and line it up perfect. I didn't, but I still got a lovely effect. So don't worry if you don't get them lined up perfect. So I've got our lovely coloured image here. I'm going to pop this over here. Um, let's pad this one, shall we? Just grab some pads. So let's give some thought as to where we're going to pop this lovely element. So I think we'll go there. I'm just going to set this one here. Um, I'm going to highlight the little hang hangover here. And then with this one, I have popped some pads underneath, some little ones. Like so. Now you could do it over the join. Does it look good over the join? What we're thinking? Or do we think we need to go higher? Shall we go higher? Let's just go higher. And then you could embellish with some sequins or something like that if you really wanted to go to town with it. I really, really love this technique and it's a technique that we don't do often enough, but the results are really, really different and really like wow. So um, I encourage you to give this one a try. Before I move on to my next demonstration though, here is a little bit more inspiration for you to get you going and ready for the next one. Here you go. really lovely sometimes to see um, some of my older videos I forget myself what we've done so to sit and watch one myself because I can obviously see myself I think oh that were a really lovely card I really liked doing that one but don't, let me tell you all my cards are not my favorites sometimes at end of studio I'm like that did not go well but um, Tim always tells me it looks well so I'm pleased with that so this is the background that I did myself before coming to air so we just remember this one so it was this one which I just trimmed down. It's got a little bit more colour on that one actually. More purple on this one than this one. You know, so I'm just going to pop some of the foiling on this one as well. So I'm not going to go as heavy as we did with this one. 
albeit it is beautiful and it'll look, it'll look absolutely gorgeous under a card like we've just done but this time I am going to keep it quite minimal so I'm just going to go and do the lines like we said like so can we see the squiggles so so I'm not going for the smudgy effect like on that one I'm just going the lines on this one and you'll see I'm just going around the edge and there's a reason for that because this card is going to look different to the last one we did I'll just set that aside I'm just going to get some of the lovely foil again now if you've got a hot foil machine the foils in there work you don't need a lot I mean I'm cutting another piece but I am absolutely certain I could have got this one again out of the piece that I used last time it's only because I have such a big roll that I'm actually getting another piece but if you've just got small rolls um, you know be quite frugal with it I would suggest so I'm just going to pop this on here now and we'll just hopefully get the line effect rather than the big chunky there we go it's a little it's delicate it's lovely so you could use a bone folder or something to really push it into that glue try and let the glue go a little bit tacky though because what will happen is if it's still like a big clump when you come to put your foil on you'll just move the glue around and you'll end up with a blob blobs do look fabulous I have to say but if that's not the look you're going for do give the glue opportunity to go tacky make sure I've got it all covered a bit more up there We have done this uh, technique before in studio um, on a much smaller scale though so I do encourage you to go back and um, watch our earlier videos there we go so you can see, oh, so you can see there it's a little less detail um, just in the lines there there we go so not as much as the last one so it's down to preference give it a go it does look lovely you could do like a northern lights effect with this as well so i'm just going to set that one aside and i have this piece of vellum here now so this card has got the same background technique as our lovely blue one but it's going to be set up different so i have the vellum piece here and i'm just going to heat emboss my sentiment onto this one so i'm going to use an anti-static bag so i don't get the flex and mess and fingerprints that we all hate going to use a sticky ink pad and I'm going to use hopefully I have got my white here yep yeah, my white um, embossing powder and from the same stamp set I'm going to use now we're going to use a smaller sentiment maybe and we've got for such a special shall we go let's go for it right because we have in this sentiment chunky sentiments and fine I always suggest that you stamp out the chunky ones first because the fine ones these little ones here will just splurge together when you put pressure on trying to get the detail in the big one you'll lose the detail in the small so I always do them separate so such a special let's go for the small friend this time so I'm going to do special you don't even have to use the such a if you don't want to so such a special I'm going to tuck this right up here close as I can there we go I'm just gonna hold it in place with the magnet so for the foiling the glue that I'm using I'm just using one of our um, regular glues now it works with it works with the book binding pin flare it works with your cosmic shimmer it works with our PT together it all works because they all dry clear what I would say is what I just said a second ago is let it go tacky before you start smudging it around um, but it works with it works with a pretty stick too with a big thick lines if you want thick lines 
it works with them all I would suggest and if it doesn't work swap your glue um, but yeah as far as I'm aware it works with all of them and I've tried them all well all the ones I have anyway so I'm just using the sticky ink pad the VersaFine I'm using a small one for this one just um, inking up the word done fine so I'll just grab a piece of card I'm just going to use the white on here it looks like I've got a little mucky mark on there now so frustrating anyway so you get beautiful special friend can we see that there So I will heat set that one first, in fact we'll not put the little one on because special friend just looks as nice I think so we'll just go with what we've got on there special friend. So get your gun hot and because we're working on vellum it will practically change uh, as soon as I put the heat on there so when you pop it on as soon as the powder starts to change um, move your gun. There we go, can you see that there? Special friend. So let's just pop these back on the stamp set. So, ahead of time I did the same stamp and the die and we've done some bright colours this time so obviously it's keeping in with our lovely background on there so I have the top folded note card and ahead of time I pop some pads behind here I'm just going to stick this straight in the center here like so and then I'm just going to just one second try and find some tape for those of you who use vellum often enough will know that if you pop glue under vellum it sort of shrivels I'm going to do it now because I don't have an alternative but it's going to be hidden anyway by our image so I'm going to pop this on here, look, can we see that there? I'm only going to pop it in this little corner though because I don't want to ruin my work. So let's just get rid of this embossing powder. Just going to pop a little bit there, look. You can see that there, just the tiniest of bit, tiniest. so and then to get the sequins to adhere um, to get the sequins on this will allow the vellum to stick a little flatter than it traditionally would so I've just got some lovely sequins here and I am going to use the PT on this one for the precision tip just going to pop a little bit there Um, try and work in threes if you can, it's easier on the eye. Like so. Just going to put some of these lovely like clear ones on there, so this will go on top. Now if you're not a sparkly person and not interested in um, pop, popping sparkly things on it's absolutely okay you don't have to do this I just like it because it helps adhere my vellum in place and you'll see exactly what I mean in a second
like so. And then we'll just put this away. And then where I've got my sequins there, just going to lift up here, like so. And then from behind, just going to pop a little bit of glue there. Excuse the head, a little bit there, a little bit there. Just give it a second to grab. And what that'll do is it'll push that vellum down. And you won't see it because of our lovely sequins. I'm just going to hold it a second whilst it grabs. Like so. And then with our beautiful embellishment, we will pop a pad on here. like so. Give it a second to grab it. And I was just looking for one of my lovely sp gossip sparkly pens but it uh, looks like, one second, no, nope, looks like I'm out of luck. Which is fine. So I would make this sparkly. So we've got two cards there. Have we got time just to do a little bit more? Okay, just one second. I just want to show you one little thing because I'm, I'm being told I've got a little bit of time. So with this one that we did here, if you get your guillotine and trim off obviously all of the excess that you're not going to use, like so, and we'll do the same with this one, so we'll get rid of the top. very similar in size and then if you cut these at one inch strips all the way down like so for both of your pieces of card I'm not going to do them all I'm just going to go with what I think is going to fit on a card just do four, and then the same with this one, one inch strips. And just do four. Like so. So if you did a whole host of backgrounds, like two or three A4 sheets, you would be absolutely good to go to make a batch of cards all as one. So I just have a card here, which I'm just going to trim down. And then with your strips of your beautiful backgrounds that you've created, I would leave a gap at the top to stamp your sentiment, which if we've got time I will. on and then the next one make sure you've got no gaps in there if you can make sure I've got the right colour in my hand speed crafting now everyone oh. and another red one 
We didn't put red on this, uh, we didn't put foil on this red one, which is a little bit of a shame, but never mind. You get the idea. That's grabbing nicely. Then another blue one. So if you have off cuts, you know, from the other two cards you've done, which is inevitable, you will have off cuts. This is a great way of maybe mopping up those off cuts and creating, whoop, creating a lovely background. Pop this red one across here. Right, so obviously trim off your overhang and then what you can do, it's such a simple card, make sure it all sticks. And then what you could do then is just grab your card, pop it in your Eureka. Make you trim obviously, excuse me, you trim this off, you wouldn't have the... And then from the set, just let's go for friend again, because we can. Maybe leave a bigger gap at the top. And then with one of the flowers that you stamp and die could just put one flower here. We've got this beautiful like background going on so it's just an, a way of you using your scraps up trim that this excess down at the bottom obviously but look at that if that's not an effective card i don't know what is so just alternative ways to use these things guys you know um let's just move this out of the way so two completed cards, I'll just move that one out of the way for now because that's not completed, that was just an off-the-cuff idea so you might want to try that one at home. So we've got our lovely one where we covered it a little bit with vellum and then we've got our lovely blue one which is like on the corner. So it's preference really, um, I hope you do give, give it a try. I've enjoyed myself anyway, I'm sure you've got the products at home or if you haven't got our products you may have something similar. Um, so have a dig through your stash and see what's going on. That's me done for today. I'm back with you on Wednesday at four o'clock again with some more inspiration. So whatever you're doing, have a lovely evening. I'll post these on Facebook so you can pop a comment on if you wish. And I will speak to you all later. Before you go though, here's a little bit more inspiration before you click the off key. Take care everyone. Bye.